Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. In this video we are going to make a really cool heart-shaped monogram that's one of a kind. Step by step I'm in Hatch but I will be showing you guys the other software, just the tools that you need. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing but I'll show you where everything is located and then you can follow along with me. So let's get started. This is really cute. You guys are going to love this and it's easier than it looks. So let's go open up the digitized tools, toolbox rather, and let's go to a standard shape. And of course, we're gonna make a heart because it's Valentine's Day. And I'm just gonna pull it out now. When you're pulling it out, if you hold down the control key, it keeps the shape. And if you hold down the shift key, it does it differently again. You can play around with it. I'm just gonna let go and kinda, cause you can have fatter hearts, you can have longer hearts. I'm thinking somewhere around there. Now, before I let go, I am going to look at the size. So it's five by five. That's a good size. It'll fit into my hoop. Click, and there you go. You have your heart. For now, this heart is just going to be um, just a guideline. We're going to fix it later. So let's uh, close that toolbox. Let's go into lettering and pick some lettering. Now I'm going to just do this in plain, but feel free to pick any um, any lettering that you want. We are going to make it big, so obviously we're not going to be doing it in satin stitches because we're going to be messing around with it a whole lot. And if you leave it at satin stitches at this size, you're probably going to have issues with really, really long satin stitches. So let's, let's not do that. So capital letters, S, B S, which is me, of course, which is me. So let's make this a little bit bigger. We're just gonna place stuff, and again, don't don't worry about the um, stitches yet. And we kind of want it like this. We're just kind of getting a you know a general idea of what we're doing. Let's zoom in there just a little bit more so you guys can see it big and clear. So the first thing I want to do is change. So go over to object properties and we're going to pick tatami. And then I want to break apart. So when I clicked on break apart, which is still open here, S BS is now separate and it's not one unit. So it basically break apart will ungroup it. So now I can move each letter individually and do different things with each letter individually. So the next thing I want you to do is let's go to edit objects and what I want to do is remove stitch angles, but if you notice, it's not available. What we need to do is break apart first and then select it again and remove stitch angles. Now, the reason why I removed them, sometimes the stitch angles look good, but I'm going to be manipulating the letters so much that this might get bunchy here. Do you see how it's it looks pretty thick? You might end up with that, so I, I'm just going to remove them, remove stitch angles. So then here, break apart, select it again, remove stitch angles. Now we have flat stitches that we didn't have to digitize and they're all sitting right here. Now, when I did the break apart, it really depends on your letter, but if you notice, it, it did break it apart quite a bit and left us kind of a hole. So let's select on that one, let's do the reshape and if that happens to you guys, it's an easy fix. You just click and place this over here. Click to add a point and spacebar to change it to a circle. And then I'm going to move this one over. And you want a little bit of an overlap. So you'll still have the look of, you know, a layered letter, but it'll be different. So I don't know what I did there. Let's do Control Z and... You know, that's that looks pretty good, I think. Pretty good, pretty good. I like it, so go back to select. So if you have any issues like that, just go back in and overlap. I would like this one a little bit closer. So zoom in, zoom out, check out your stuff. 
and make sure it's right. Oh, let's go to reshape. I'm clicking on the same thing. So then you can see what the issue is. So that's the bottom one. See how I just moved it to see what I'm doing? That one can go there and this one can go here. And if you look carefully enough and maybe, you know, swipe it back and forth that I did, you save yourself a lot of trouble. Move as few as you can. So I like that problem solved. So let's get down to the fun. Now that we have it all flat stitches and we know no matter what we do, it's going to stitch out nice. Let's select on there. Now let's make the letters into a shape. How cool is this? So I'm just going to pull them out and we want to give it kind of some semblance of fitting in. Now you can play around with this as much or as least amount that you want. You can make this, you know, curve up, curl around. I kind of like how it was. That might be too wide, but if you like it, just leave it. And, and that's the general idea is that you make it, you know, look good. It's going to fit in nicely. So let's leave the S like that for now. And let's look at our B. Our B is going to be our good one. I wanted to make sure it's in the middle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can click and bring out a guideline if you wanted to. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. All right, so let's throw away the guideline. That's what I always do. Throw it. It's just fun. Uh, okay, so let's start off with grabbing that and putting it right up to there and see how that's going to look and bring it to just touch on one part. So touching there, touching there. Let's go to our reshape and I'm going to zoom back in because we want to get a little precise on that. So I'm going to need a point there and then try bringing this up. That might be okay. That might be okay. Now this has to go, you don't want to bring it here because that's, look, that's going to look weird, right? That that kind of changes our whole B. So control Z, get rid of that. We want to bring this, hold down our control key so we keep it in a straight line. See how that works? I can move my mouse all I want, but because I'm holding down the control key, it works. So we keep the line of the B and we're going to click here, space bar, turn it to a curve and go right there. Now that is really nice. That is really, really nice. It looks kind of good. I like it. So try to keep the letters as letters as much as you can. Stretch them a little bit, but not too much. This B is going to look good. Click to add another point. Put it in here. Now I got to move this part over. And let's step back a little bit, as I call it, and look. Yep, that looks really, really good. Now, our next S, we want it to be even. So we're going to pull out a guideline there. And we're going to pull this. I don't know if I want to make it bigger. I might just make it longer. Because look, the outside of the S is going over. I guess we could do it this way. Yeah, you know, that's a solution. So select it. Let's do reshape. Let's zoom right in here. And we're going to put our S over. And if you have a bend that you don't like, click, put another curve in it so it goes smoothly. That might be groovy that way too. And let's bring this one out. Is that too wide? I'm not going to be able to tell until I step back. So still nice curves on the S. Yeah, I kind of like it. Let's stretch this part out just so it fits in a little bit better, a little bit better. Let's step back. Well, I think that looks fantastic. How easy is that to do? Now, there's one more thing that I would like to actually two more things to finish it. So depending on your letters, that's how you want to do it. Now, one thing I noticed is that I moved that S down and I made it uneven with the other one. So let's go back and I'm going to have to zoom in just a little bit to see how this looks. I don't know if I want it tucked right in there. That does not look cool, but we could do that and we could make it a little rounder. Okay, let's 
step back and see. Yeah, that kind of fix it. I would like this one to be a little bit fuller. So it's just a matter of, you know, kind of playing around with it and seeing what you think and, and making sure that you don't manipulate the letters too much. I like that a lot, actually. I really like that. So now we want to go, this is the important part. We want to go into reshape and we want to find, it doesn't matter where the start one is, but we want to put our stop right here on the edge. Go back to select and close our edit objects and go to digitize. And we want to digitize an open shape and we're just going to follow along here. Let me zoom in. We're going to follow along here. You know I put it right there. We're going to follow along here and we're going to leave it at there. Hit enter and then go back to your select key and we're going to move this up because right now it's st stitching out afterwards and it's really not doing us any good. So click on the black arrows, move it up. So now it's stitching this and there's our handy connector over to here. So now on the B, we have to find out where everything is. So reshape again. Now we want this to start. Whoops, don't grab the wrong one. You can control Z that if you want it. So again, I did it. Nope, there we go. So we want it to start there because that's where we ended off. And we want it to end there because we're going to make another connection there. So why don't we do that? Digitize open shape, click here and follow along. And don't worry, we're going to be covering, thing, covering things up. End there, hit enter, go back to your select key. Now, of course, we want to move this up. Now, why don't we just change the colors because this yucky green isn't quite nice enough. How about a nice bright pink? Now that's looking good. This needs to be overlapped a little bit, but you guys can play around with that. So, so far, so good. Let's go back to objects and let's take this and let's change this to satin. Yeah, only one problem. Guess what? It is in the wrong order. So let's put it in the right order. And if you click on the arrow with the line, it moves it directly to the bottom. Now it's awesome. And you have a one of a kind, depending on your lettering, depending on the fonts that you pick, you have a one of a kind design like this. How fantastic is that? Why don't we take it a little step further. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste control uh, C and control V and that goes on top and that's fine. I do want it up one and I'm going to change the color to maybe red, which really, what are you doing, Sue? That's uh, okay. Just bear, bear with me on this one. We are going to go into motifs and it, I have a really, my really monster screen going on. So it's kind of out. There we go. Took a second to move. Now we want to do something. We probably don't want to do black work, do we? No, because those ones are kind of big. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's just always going to do that. Is it? Okay. Okay. Problems, technical issues. All right, let's try it again. Black work. There we go. Uh, let's go to single motifs right away because we're going to kick it up a notch and we just don't want to move the whole thing over, do we? No, because I spend too, too long doing it. Now, we don't want a satiny thing. What we do want is something light and beautiful. Uh, hearts might look good. Do we have hearts? We have this one. I don't think that's going to look good, but we can try it. I had a little bit of technical difficulty there. Sorry, my computer didn't want to do everything that it wanted. But I added another one to here. Look how pretty that is. This I'd like to spread out a little bit, but my computer doesn't like it, so I'm just going to leave it. This one I thought was really pretty. Now let's do the S. So let's do Control C and then Control V, and we put the S on it. And let's move it up one. And then let's change it to, 
Mm, I wonder if Ripple would work. No, of course not. What was I thinking? We could even do this, meandering. We would have to change everything. What about cross stitch? Uh, contour? Nope, that's weird. So let's go to that one. Let's change the color so we can see. Now, obviously, that's not working. Not all of them will, but you know what? That one does. Now, remember, too, you can do two motifs on it. You don't have to do just one. This is the one I picked for the B, and I just thought it was really pretty. What about something like that? You know what? That is absolutely fine. That looks really good. So simple. Go for simple. I like that as well. So just three examples of how you can, you know, make it work like that. If you were doing all of the same colors for this part, for the S, B, and the S, I did them different just so you guys can see how it look looks. Make sure you do your connectors from here to here the same way we did it the first time. Um, I would do it in, in different colors um, to make it look a little bit better. And then your wonderful satin stitches or whatever stitch you choose will cover up your traveling stitches. So how awesome is that? We've optimized it, we've created it, and then we've added some fancy flair. Now, because we changed the letters to to Tommy, we don't have to worry about anything. And I wouldn't make it too much smaller. You can a little bit, but I think you'll lose detail. We can make it bigger and better, I think, um, except for the S. Again, I'm not gonna mess with it. I don't know why my computer doesn't like it, but let's not do it. But you can see the shapes better. Now this is eight by two. So this, this guy, oh, sorry, let's do the whole thing. Uh, this is nine by nine, so we're getting quite large. Um, but I do have a hoop that this would fit in. I have a nine and a half by nine and a half on McDreamy. How good does this look? I'm so happy with it. Play around with the letters, use different fonts, uh, make the overlap look really cute. You could actually, whatever you put on your letters, you could make your satin stitches a little bit bigger. Ooh, you could also do that on the inside. You could do an elastic or embossed fill. That would look really, really good. Really, really good. I love it. See what happens when you do satin? I just wanted to flip to that. That I don't think would look great. Control Z, back out. So that's how you do it in Hatch. Let's flip over to the other software and I'm gonna show you the tools. Okay, right so there, just yeah. quickly, this is Ember Studio. You have to have the studio part to be able to do any digitizing. So we wanna pick an open shape line. Um, I guess it doesn't have to be open shape, does it? Oh, well, let's do it anyways. Uh, click here, add a shape. Now, I don't have um, a heart on this one, so I'm just gonna use what I've got and show you guys basically how to do it. Pull it out, right click, two elements, and then there we go. So that is our outline. Obviously, this isn't gonna work as well now, is it? <laughs> But uh, you guys will get the idea. It's basically the same thing. So make your shape. Now, if you don't have shapes, then you could find a heart, um, cut out a heart, scan it, put it on here, and then use it to digitize a line. So let's go to our lettering, and I'm gonna use built-in lettering here. And I'm just gonna do one of the letters because I don't wanna be too, too long. So let's do just the S on that one. Sure, why not? So there, and then we're gonna pull it down and we're gonna make it bigger. Again, you guys do it properly on your heart. Right click parameters and sorry, that opened outside and we want to change that. So with Ember, you have a few options for your lettering. So select it and select it and go up here to convert. So you can convert this into an applique. Now, if you do it big enough, this will look fantastic. One click and you're done. So we can switch 
from a column to a fill through this. So let's do that. And remember, you have to generate the stitches. So now we have a fill stitch. And now we can go into node mode here. I just clicked over here. And you can manipulate everything to look great. I don't know about this part to do it with the heart. I don't think that's going to look great. But anyways, that you, you can pick whatever font you want. Just make sure it works. This one doesn't have any angle lines, so we don't have to worry about that. Now you can copy, right click. You can copy, right click and paste. And you can see that it worked because it's on top there. Let's left click, drag a color down. We want to right click and we want to go to parameters. And again, sorry, it opens up outside. And this is for the top layer. We want to click on motif and then we can pick out different motifs to do. I think this one probably has to be a bit bigger for the motifs to work. I think that's the problem. Motifs won't work on small things. They can't form and it kind of looks strange. So make yours bigger for sure. Yeah, mine is actually really small. I wasn't paying attention. But the nice thing about Embird is that you can apply it before you generate the stitches. So make yours bigger. You can play around with the sizes and everything. Make it fit and then we'll just leave that. Generate stitches. That's fine. That's not what you want. You can take okay, here we are in PE Design 11, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you the tools. So I, you want to make a shape. Now, my only concern is how pointy it, this bottom of it is. So make sure we have enough space for it. And you just, again, wanted a running stitch. There is something that you can center it, but... I don't have all my stuff set up. Boo to me. So let's add a letter. Let's do the lovely letter S for me. Capital S. Either way, I guess this one is only capitals. And we are going to make this bigger. Now the satin's going to look like a disaster. There we go. Actually, I was playing around with it. So let's put it back at satin. There you go. That's kind of strange, isn't it? I, I think it's kind of strange. So let's take that off and let's put it at a fill stitch. Now, if you look into it, um, that's a lot of angles and changes. It didn't convert very well, did it? But I'll show you guys a quick trick for it. Let's take this and we are going to convert it. So let's go to text and we're going to convert it to blocks which is fantastic. And then we're going to go here to our node mode and we're going to select it and wow. Okay. So these are all angle lines and this is what's making it such a mess in the fill stitches. You do not have to go through each one and delete it. That would take you all day. Click on one, right click, delete direction line, delete lines, not selected. Boom and you're done look at how lovely that was awesome so there you go and now you can start you know pulling it out and making it fit you just go into node mode again let's go here and click on it and then you can move the nodes around you can um, press the delete key to get rid of them you can do it however you want now I it, there's a few options for this one you can do the copy and paste and then change it to motif you could work on for the heart you could put one of the pretty background fills if it is big enough for sure. If you did it big enough, you can put it through the applique wizard and two clicks, have it done. You can also go to stamp and emboss. It, it again has to be bigger. So let's go to this one and I'll show you. I guess this one's good. So select which one that you want. This one's filled, obviously. How about this heart? I kind of like that one. And simply stamp on where you want it. And again, when you're done setting up all your letters, take your time doing it. Put a, a, a you know, design on top, 
don't just leave it plain. We want to change this into the zigzag stitch. I think that would look better. Make it a little thicker. You can put a motif stitch on it. It would be very pretty. And the same colors would look even better. Don't forget to make your connections on this and you can move stuff around here. So that's how it's done. That's the tools anyways to get it done here inside PE Design 11. Okay, now for Embrilliance. And again, I am just showing you the tools and you can follow the steps in the other videos. So let's go here. Let's bring in a heart. And again, in Embrilliance, you have a whole ton of shapes, which I love. Let's click, bring it in. Now I'm gonna make this quite big. Remember, we're doing this quite big. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. Now in Embrilliance, you have to remember that this is a line. You have to assign a stitch to it. Now it is a running stitch. So that's all you have to do for that. And now we are going to add some lettering right here. Let's do an S, why not keep with the tradition? Oops, did that wrong. Go to set, there's our S. We're gonna make this S a whole lot bigger as well. There we go, and click on it again, and you can see stitches that it is to Tommy. Now you can change it to different things if you want. It is big enough that these will show up decently, or make sure it is big enough to show up decently. So you can pick from anything like that to give it a little bit of flair, or we can go back to our other way. But first of all, let's copy and then let's paste. And we've got, you can see that there's two right there. Okay, so we wanna select on the second one and you have to have Stitch Artist 3 to be able to do it this way. There's an alternate way of doing it. It's just not one click. So create an outline from stitches on the page. And there you go, we have our outline. So let's delete this second one. Let's left click, drag, cause we want this after. We want it to show up after, right? So it stitches out this, then it's going to do the S, and then we can change it to fill with, of course, a motif fill. Now, of course, you can go in, you can add another motif, and you've got a lovely list of everything. You could do a heart. Right now it has two, so it kind of makes a different design. You can remove, you can change them around so it looks fantastic on your design. Remember, you don't want too many jump stitches, so depending on the colors that you're using, make sure you make uh, really good connections. I think different colors makes it look really, really good. Um, but before you do all that, you need to, you need to, stretch your letters and make sure everything fits. Now I already, I did it in the wrong order, so that's not cool. You could select them both and move them, but it's easier if you do the tatami one first and just move your nodes to make sure everything fits. And then we're gonna make this one into, let's go into Stitch Artist. We're gonna make this one into a satin stitch, which is right here. And boom, you are done. Put everything in the right order. The satin has to stitch last. You'll have your other letters. Make your connection with running stitches. So you want to draw with points and make it a running stitch and move the order around and move the start and stop points right here so they match up as well so you make great connections and you'll see that you've made great connections because you won't have any red lines showing jump stitches so that is how you do it in Embrilliance. So, so let's get back to ours on Hatch and again there's a lot of things you can do with it a lot of changes that you can make. I think this would be fantastic on a shirt. Absolutely fantastic on a shirt. You can dress it up as much as you like. I, I think it would be really good. Let's, let's just do one more thing. We're going to change that and then we're going to make it a motif stitch. I wanted to show you guys. Obviously that one's not going to work. That looks crappy. I'm going to fight with the window again for no reason. I don't know why it does that. Uh, something about my computer today. I've had some issues. Let's go to single motifs. Uh, that is a bit dense. 
that is a bit big, but you can go ahead and make it smaller. That kind of gives it a pretty frilly edge. You could actually make it, depending on what you're stitching it on, you could maneuver it around or inflate it or make it a little bit bigger um, or redo it on the outside and have it just overlapping just a little bit, almost like right over here, let's zoom in, right over here and it would look like a like a frill but keep it simple i think the the more simple it is the better it's going to look because you are doing it over satin stitches right so you don't want it to be too much if we had a heart that would be cool we could try that a heart oh it's satin stitch so never mind that's not going to work something simple how about like that yeah see now that would look great too you can just line it up again because I moved it make it a little bit smaller remember you can adjust the height on it and have it stitch out and you will have some lace so hopefully everybody makes one of a kind original monograms and uh, you make it look really pretty as you want and and get busy with the decorative stitches and make everything look awesome and uh, enjoy so thanks everyone for watching I hope you guys like this video it's turned out a bit longer than I thought but uh, so we'll call it a, a class make sure you do your homework and post it in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group and show everyone how creative you are thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video